Hello everyone, this is Simplify Academy, Order of Operations. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about why we need order of operations. I'm going to explain a way that I like to think about with order of operations, and we are going to do quite a bit of practice. Let's get started. First off, the why behind the order of operations. Basically, I think it's easiest to show you in an example. If I were to ask you to solve these two questions, 8 plus 2 times 3, they could be solved in two different ways. One, you could just go left to right, like this, 8 plus 2 is 10, and 10 times 3 is 30. Or you could start by multiplying, 2 times 3 is 6, and then add them together. Notice in both cases you get a different answer. That's why we need the order of operations. We need it to be the same order that everyone uses. No matter where you are, no matter what country you're in, what state you're in, you're going to do the same question the same exact way and get the same answer. Let's talk about what order it is. First of all, the thing that gets done first is grouping symbols. Sometimes we call this parentheses, but it includes a little bit more. It includes braces, brackets, parentheses, and it includes fraction bars, which we'll talk about later. But basically all of that gets put into one category of grouping symbols. If we put it inside of a grouping symbol, it gets simplified first. Then we do exponents, and we'll talk about that later on and what that means. But that's something that would get simplified next. After that, we're going to do division and multiplication in one step from left to right, and subtraction and addition in one step from left to right. Those are the order. Now, I want to explain something that I have seen a million times, well, maybe not a million. That's rounding up quite a bit. This, this PEMDAS, this please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The reason I don't like this, and I'm not going to use this when we talk about order of operations, is because it often leads to mistakes being made. People think that because the letters are in that order, it's always done in that order. We always do parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, then when all the multiplication is done, then you move on to the division, and then you do addition, and when all the addition is done, then you move on to the subtraction. And there's some just basic mistakes with that. If you're going to write out these letters, these letters themselves aren't bad, just put a big space between them or make sure to group together the multiplication and division because they get done in one step and group together the addition and subtraction because they get done in one step. The way I group them together is actually using grouping symbols. When I write them, I will often write them in this way to make sure that, that it emphasizes that that multiplication and division is one step. I want to share something um, that shows this in a way that might make sense and hopefully will help. Bed mass might not mean anything to Americans, but to some people around the world, that's the thing that they learned order of operations. They didn't learn, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, they learned this bed mass. Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Notice the division and multiplication there are swapped from the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally model. That's because it does not matter what order the multiplication and division are written in because they are one step. I hope that helped to emphasize that. We'll show examples of it here. Now let's get into actually looking at numbers. I think that that's when things really start to make more sense. I will leave this version of the order of operations up on the screen to help us as guide us as we're going through. Here is our first question, 10 divided by two plus three. There are no grouping symbols. There's no exponents. But there is some division. So we notice we look through that list up there, parentheses or grouping symbols, exponents. Then we get to our multiplication division step. There's some division, so let's do it. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now all we have left is addition, so we'll just add those numbers. I want to show you another question that looks different, but really is exactly the same thing. Because with this one, we're going to do the division first, then the addition. 
because we always do division before we do addition. So if you look at that, I'd be doing 10 divided by 2, which gives me 5, and then 3 plus 5, which gives me 8. Notice in these questions, the answer is exactly the same, 8, because we did the operations in the same order. Our final question, I threw in some multiplication there, addition and multiplication. When you have the choice, you will do multiplication first. So we do 3 times 2, which gives us 6, and then 5 plus 6 leaves us with 11. So going back to that original question that I showed, I showed two different ways of doing it. I want you to look at this screen, think about everything that we've talked about, and pick which one you think is right now. Which one of these followed the correct order of operations? I hope the coloring there didn't throw you off, red light, green light type of thing, um, because the green is the correct answer. We have the d multiplication would get done before the addition because that's the correct order of operations. Now, I want to emphasize this whole multiplication, division, addition, subtraction thing. So to do that, I'm going to show three questions and I want to, again, hope that this will illustrate the point. If I have this question, 5 plus 2 minus 1, that is all addition and subtraction. So we have no exponents, we have no, um, no grouping symbols, no exponents, no division multiplication. We'll move to that last step. Because all that's left is addition and subtraction, we'll do it from left to right. 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 minus 1 is 6. In this question, all we have is addition and subtraction, and so we're going to do it from left to right. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Notice in the first example we did adding before subtracting. In the second example we did subtracting before we did adding. That's because addition and subtraction are one step. In our final example, I threw in some division and multiplication. Again, putting it in the order that we do division first, because that's what we come to first when we're moving from left to right. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. This is the correct order of operations. Now what I'd like you to do, because this is the most common area where people make mistakes, I want you to explain the order of operations in your own words. Try to explain it, because explaining it means that your brain has to process it and has to understand it in a way that would be meaningful to someone else. So go ahead and seriously pause the video, try it out, try and explain this in some kind of a way. Some possible responses that you might have come up with is you might have said that you multiply and divide from left to right. That would be a perfect way to explain it. You could say you add and subtract in the order they appear from left to right. That would also be a perfect way to explain it. Obviously, I can't hear your way of explaining it, but if it's something like that, then you're in good shape. Now that we've conquered the division, multiplication, subtraction, addition, which is the area where most mistakes are made, I want to talk briefly about grouping symbols. Grouping symbols will change the answer inside of your math expression. Let me show you. If I had 9 minus 3 plus 1, normally I would solve it left to right because all that's left is addition subtraction. So I would do 9 minus 3, which is 6, and 6 plus 1, which gives me 7. No problem. However, if I want someone to first do that addition, then subtract, I would change the question to looking like this. Notice I put those grouping symbols around the 3 plus 1. That means I want you to first simplify what's inside the grouping symbols, then do everything else. In this case, we would first add 3 plus 1, which gives us 4, and then we would subtract 9 minus 4 gives us 5. I want you to look at this question here, 7 plus the quantity of 4 minus 2, and I want you to try and figure out what would you do first. Is the first thing that you would do the subtraction, 4 minus 2? If so, you're correct. I'm not actually solving this expression. I am just saying the first thing that I would do. The very first thing would be to subtract 4 minus 2, because that's inside the grouping symbol. 
Now we're going to practice with something that's a little bit more complicated. I want you to try and figure out what's first inside of this monstrosity of an expression. It's really big expression, but it can be made a lot more simple by looking at the grouping symbols. When you have 20 minus the quantity of some big thing, you know you're going to take 20 minus something at the end. So let's just cover that up. We're not doing that right now. First, we're going inside the grouping symbols. And inside of these brackets, those square brackets, are some more grouping symbols. So inside of there, you would follow the order of operations. And that says we're actually going even farther inside of there to these parentheses. I'm not going to ask you to solve an expression that's this complicated, but you will see on the worksheet that you do have questions that ask what is first or what is last, where you'll have to look at that and say the things inside the grouping symbols come first and the other stuff comes afterwards. So in this case, one plus two is the thing that you do first. In my next expression, here I have all four basic operations, and I want you to say which one would you do first. Again, I'm not expecting you to solve this expression right yet now. That's pretty complicated. I just want you to look at it and figure out what comes first. Think about it for a second. Did you pick that you would first divide, 14 divided by 2? The reason we do this is there's no grouping symbols, there's no exponents, so we do all of the multiplying and dividing first, starting at the left, moving to the right. And the first one we come to is 14 divided by 2. That would be the first thing that you do. Again, I am not going to ask you to solve a full expression like this yet. But by the end of the year, this will seem like easy stuff and you'll be, you'll be able to do it, no problem. The next type of question that you might see is asking what is last. Let's look at this crazy expression again and decide what we would do last. Basically, it's the opposite of what we were doing before. We would look, well, look inside the grouping symbols, inside the grouping symbols. You notice that this is the one that you would do first, and that's perfectly fine, except that we're not looking for the one that we're doing first. We're looking for what do we do last. Inside of this large expression, we can also look at those brackets. That would be done next. Meaning that the very last thing that you're going to be doing is 20 minus whatever that gives us. Now, I will not ask you to simplify that entire expression. I will just expect you to say the last thing that you're going to do in this case is subtraction. Perfect. Let's look at our other expression we had, 8 minus 2 plus 14 divided by 2 times 4. In this, the first step was 14 divided by 2. Our next step would be then the multiplying, whatever that gives us times 4. Then we would go back to having 8 minus 2 plus whatever that number is. Well, we would start with that, we only have subtraction and addition, so we'll start at the left, moving to the right, we'll first do our subtraction, and the very last step would be addition. Again, I'm not asking you to solve it, just to look at it and think through the steps, because this type of kind of big picture thinking is what's going to help you when the questions look complicated and you can break it down into bite-sized pieces. All right, couple things to remember. First off, Please don't write the letters all by themselves. Put a space between them. Put grouping symbols around them. Do something so that you help with that addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. division. Focus on what comes first. Block out the rest if you need to. I hope that that video was helpful for you. Now you can go practice questions like this on the worksheet before you take the quiz. Good luck, everyone, and have a wonderful day.